There we go. Okay. All right. Welcome to the Berean Bible Fellowship. Today is January 19th, right on the cusp of uh, Martin Luther King's birthday where we celebrate it. Uh, today in Syracuse, we've got a little bit of inclement weather, so we decided that we're going to we're going to have the sermon and broadcast from home today. So uh, uh, bear with us. And last week we are uh, we had the sermon: three thrones, three resurrections, and three judgments. This week we're doing part two to that. We last week we covered the first. Uh, resurrection throne and judgment which was the judgment of the body of Christ the judgment seat of Christ where uh, the rapture will occur and those in Christ will be taken away in, in the twinkling of an eye uh, will be resurrected directly to the to the judgment seat of Christ uh, where we'll be judged for our service and receive reward for our service but that is the first of the resurrections, the judgments, and the thrones. The second uh, is what we're going to cover today, and it's actually uh, part two to the first resurrection. There's a re there's actually a resurrection of the of the saved, and then there's a judgment. Excuse me, a resurrection of the damned, of those who are condemned. This is part two to the resurrection of those who are saved. And this resurrection actually started with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is uh, preeminent in all things. He's first in all things. So when Jesus Christ was resurrected, we are all part of that, that resurrection. Those of us who are uh, saved, who are in Christ, and also what you will find today is the uh, resurrection of Israel. So what about Israel? How do they differ from the body of Christ? Israel was promised the earth. Israel was promised the earth. The body of Christ is dwells in heavenly places. Israel being promised the earth, they have their millennial reign of Christ, or the thousand-year reign of Christ, promised through the Davidic covenant. That's the covenant that was promised through David, where Jesus Christ is promised to is is. Uh, prophesied to be the greater son of David, meaning that he would come through the line of David. And if you were to look at Mary's bloodline and Joseph's bloodline, you'd find that Mary is Jesus Christ's blood relation to the line of David. Uh, but what of Joseph? Now, Joseph not being his uh, actual biological father, but he's his legal father. In, in Jewish customs, the, it always follows through the male. So for Jesus Christ to have a, a claim upon the throne of David, he would have to have a legal connection to that throne, uh, which he does through, uh, through Joseph, his uh, stepfather. Now, Christ will sit on his earthly throne and rule the earth from Jerusalem. So this is the second throne that we're talking about. The first throne was the uh, the body of Christ, where Christ sits upon his throne in heaven and, and judges our service. This throne is here on earth, and it's in, uh, it is uh, located in Jerusalem, where Christ, it says that Christ will reign for a thousand years from Jerusalem. Here we're dealing with a saved Israel, and they will serve as the nation of priests, as promised in Exodus 19.6, where Christ says, and let's turn to that quickly. We like to give actual scriptures. And 19.6 says, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. This message was given to Moses. And... Uh, it was a conditional covenant, meaning that there was things Israel was to do. Israel was to follow the laws that God had given them. And he said if they did, then they would be, they would be a nation of priests, a nation peculiar unto God. So here uh, in Exodus 19.6, the only way that they can execute as a nation of priests is as a saved Israel. They are to carry the gospel to the world. God is not going to have an unsaved Israel 
following, uh, carrying his gospel. Now, during this thousand-year reign of Christ, what are going to be some of the differences that we'll find? First off, there'll be no more war. Uh, we're, here we are right now, uh, threatened by a possible war with Iran. There's war in Syria. There's war in Iraq. There's war in Afghanistan. Uh, it seems that from, from the, the creation of the United States, there's always been a time when the United States has been at war, or someplace in the world, there's been war. Uh, but during this thousand-year reign of Christ, Christ will sit on the throne as judge, and there will be no more war. And what of all the weapons? What of all the atom bombs, of all the different... Uh, the, the uh, articles of war that we have. Weapons will be melted and formed into farming equipment so that they can till the ground, uh, representing that you have perfect peace. Also, the environment will be healed and returned to its original state. Uh, you'll, you won't have any more global warming or uh, some of the different uh, things that are claimed. You're not going to have the earthquakes and the volcanoes. Uh, the earth will be healed. The animal kingdom will be at perfect peace, probably like it was on the ark. You know, you think about all the animals that uh, Noah had on the ark, and uh, there was no conflict. There, there was no beasts trying to kill each other. Uh, in the Bible, it says the leopard shall lay down with the lamb. Uh, so there'll be perfect peace during this thousand years. Israel will be in their resurrected bodies, uh, free from the old sin nature. Uh, it says that God will, we'll read this verse here in a bit, it says that uh, God will write his law on their heart and in their inward parts. Uh, the Gentiles that made it through the tribulation period, they will still have the old sin nature. The only difference will be Satan will be locked up for a thousand years and they won't, he won't be able to tempt the nations. So there'll be no more, uh, no more comments talking about the devil made me do it. Uh, you'll be living without the influence of sin. As I said, they'll still have an old, the old sin nature. They're, they're, the Gentiles will still be in unresurrected bodies. Those who, as I said, made it through the tribulation period and those that did not receive the mark nor worship the beast. Uh, they will enter into the kingdom just as Israel will, but Israel uh, accepting their Messiah in one day at the end of the tribulation period, they will, they will receive their resurrected bodies. But in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, it talks of this time, and it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it upon their hearts. And, there, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. Now, as I said, uh, there's going to be certain judgments going on, and Christ actually delegates his, his, his judgment during this time period. We see in Revelations 20, verse 4 through 6, it, it says, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image... Neither had they received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. 
Blessed and holy is he who hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And this is talking about is, uh, a saved Israel. They shall reign with him. Uh, Abraham, David, all the saints from the past shall be resurrected, uh, and they shall live in the kingdom. We remember when uh, the thief on the cross, that uh, he, he asked Jesus to remember him when he came into his kingdom. And Jesus promised him, he said, that you shall be with me when, when my kingdom comes. He says, I tell you this today. In other words, I'm telling you on this day that when my kingdom comes, when my kingdom is set up, you and I will be together. You will be with me. And the, um, in, in Matthew 31, it also speaks, and it says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit up upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be, he, shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set up his, the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on, on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So those who make it through the, the tribulation period, a saved Israel and Gentiles who are, have come through the tribulation period, they will be judged as to who can enter the kingdom and who cannot. Christ sits upon this throne, and as, this, as he had said here, he'll have the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. The goats will not be able to enter in. And they actually have a, a period where Israel has another rapture. Uh, excuse me, not Israel, but the, the Gentiles have another rapture. And it talks about it in Matthew, and it says that, Two, uh, two, are, two uh, women or two men are grinding at the mill. One is taken, one is left. Two men are in a, in a bed together. Two, one is taken, one is left. This is where the unsaved are being removed from the earth and only those who are saved and have followed after Christ and not worshiped the beast and not worshiped his image, they are able to enter into the kingdom. So where... You had the first rapture that those in Christ were taken off and those who were the unsaved were left. Now you have the saved remaining and the unsaved being taken out of the way. So during this kingdom period, the saints of the past of Israel, as I said, will be resurrected unto life. They live in their resurrected bodies free from the old sin nature and they serve as, as priests for the Messiah. And it talks about this in Zechariah, and it says in Zechariah 8.23, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. So during this thousand-year reign, the earth, as I said, will be restored. Righteousness is restored. We have the righteous judge on the throne. This is when it talks about turning the other cheek. Uh, don't, don't retaliate because judgment will be instantaneous. God will judge, judge people for, for the sins that they do instantly. All saints from the past will, will be resurrected to live in the kingdom. It was promised to David. It was promised to Abraham. They were promised the land. They were promised the kingdom. They were promised the king. This is where Jesus Christ, God, is fulfilling the covenants. He's fulfilling the promises that were made. Uh, if he doesn't fulfill his promises, or if he, as some people believe, fulfills the promises to the Jews, to the Gentiles, then he's not really, he's not God because he's not kept his word. But... You know, a little bit more evidence that uh, they're going to be resurrected 
is in Matthew 19:27 when Peter was asking uh, Jesus, he says, you know, we've forsaken all and followed you. What will be our reward? In Matthew 19, 27 says, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, what they will be judging them of, I, I don't know, because as I said, Israel will be in resurrected body, so they won't be judging them of sin, but uh, be judging them of something. So Israel has the, the throne that Christ will sit on in, during the millennium, judging the nations, and they have, he delegates with the 12 thrones for the apostles and those who were beheaded during the tribulation period. Uh, they will reign, reign and judge with him. Now, they have their, set, their, set, their part two of the first resurrection. We had Jesus Christ being uh, resurrected, preeminent in all things. You have the body of Christ resurrected to the judgment seat of Christ. Now you have the nation of Israel being resurrected to the kingdom. But what of the unbeliever, such as Judas, Cain, all those who died in the flood, and all who have stood against God, those who have chose to stand on their own righteousness, from the beginning of time until, until those who will attack the throne of God, at the end of the thousand year reign, and you know, it talks in the book of Isaiah how that uh, people, will, their lives will also be extended. You figure with perfect environment, perfect food, no diseases, no crime, all these things that affect our lives and affect our, uh, how long we live that it says that people will live longer, that uh, someone will be as 300 years old and will be as, as a child. So people are going to live longer, and some people are going to live throughout that thousand-year reign. People will have that perfect environment, they will have the perfect judge on the throne, but there will be still some who will not believe. Because at the end of the thousand years, Satan is released from the pit, and he's allowed to tempt the nations again. And he's able to gather together an army, and he attacks the throne of God in Jerusalem. Uh, but God wipes him out. Don't worry, we know who wins this one. God wipes him out, and he wipes out his armies. Then comes the next resurrection, and the final resurrection, the resurrection of the damned. And we read in Revelations 20, 11 through 15, and it says, And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now a couple of points here. I want you to notice, and he, he, and he says it twice here, what are they judged on? They're judged upon their works. Sin is not an issue here. I remember when I was young and I first was saved, uh, my uh, brother Jimmy had brought back some chick tracks. And they were little Bible stories that uh, uh, expressed the, the gospel at the end of them so that uh, you could understand that you were a sinner and that you needed Jesus Christ to be saved. Um, and these chick tracks, they used to show people standing in line coming up to the great white throne judgment and they were going up there and they showed you on a screen and it was 
expressed that they were going to go through your sins and name all your sins and, and then you would be judged upon that. And I always thought, I said, boy, I hope they got chairs because I know when I get up there, we're going to be up there for a while because, you know, I've, 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 <laughs> I've sinned as good as anybody else in this world. Uh, praise God that we have a Savior who died for our sins. And he was a, he's a competent God, which means that when he was on that cross, he came into contact with each and every sin ever committed, from the very first sin of Adam and Eve to the very last sin of the thousand-year reign of Christ. He didn't leave anything uncovered. Sin entered the world through one man. The punishment for sin exited through, uh, through uh, the second Adam. Uh, that's one of the biggest confusions that, that we must repent of our sins, that, that Christ didn't cover our sins when he was on the cross, and there's more that we have to do. We have to save ourselves. Christ came and died on the cross because we can't save ourselves. And through the different uh, judgments and resurrections, our sins are never brought up, not only to the saved, but to the unsaved. Their sins are paid for also. But free of sin and uh, having your sins paid for is not what you need to get into heaven. So if it's not the lack of sin that, uh, or the sin that's going to keep you out of heaven, what is it that's going to keep you out? It is the lack of perfect righteousness. We must have the righteousness of Christ. And when we believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, as it says in Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, when we believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, we are saved eternally. Our sins are paid for, we are placed in Christ, and we have, in, we have given to us the perfect righteousness of Christ which gives us the ability to stand in the presence of a holy God for all eternity. That is what we need. And when we see here in Revelations 20 that they're judged upon their works because they don't have the righteousness of Christ. They decided that their righteousness was acceptable and it should be enough. And it will, they will always come up short. Uh, and they will, their names will not be written in the book of life. Uh, because they are not righteous. They do not have perfect righteousness. So the unbeliever is also resurrected. Not like the body of Christ or Israel, who are both resurrected to life, but, they, but to judgment and death. They are judged by their works and found to be unrighteous. They are destroyed in the lake of fire. This is the second death. The second and final death. And then death and hell are destroyed. So there is no burning in the lake of fire forever. Because you would have to have eternal life in order to burn forever. And where is eternal life found? Eternal life is found only in Christ. And you cannot be in hell burning in the lake of fire and be in Christ. So thus you are destroyed. It is the second death. It is exactly what it says it is. And we, we need to start understanding when, when God says something, he means it. When he says that we die and we sleep and that we are the dead know nothing, that means that there is no life outside of the resurrection. Here, Israel uh, is not part of the first part of the resurrection for the body of Christ. They are dead and in the grave. They are not in heaven. Heaven was never promised to Israel. When we look into the 22nd chapter of Revelation, we see a new, he a new heaven and a new earth. And upon the new earth comes down the new Jerusalem. And that's where Israel's dwelling place is. This is kind of like what was probably set up and prepared for Adam and Eve, and what they what they uh, what they blew by sinning, that perfect uh, environment, that perfect place to dwell, that is what was was for them. That is what is for the nation of Israel. But as in Ephesians chapter one, it says that 
the body of Christ, our dwelling places as heavenly places. And eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what is in store for us. So here we've gone over the three resurrections of the three thrones and the three judgments. The first being Jesus Christ's resurrection, which extends to the body of Christ, which extends to the nation of Israel, and it is the resurrection of those who are saved and in Christ. Then we have the resurrection of the damned. We had three different uh, seats of judgment with the body of Christ at the Bema, then we have the nation of Israel going into the kingdom, and then we have the damned being judged, and the different thrones and judgments. Uh, I pray that, uh, that God will give you discernment and help you understand what truth is, that, uh, that His Word is truth, and um, anyone who preaches out of tradition or culture, we should, we should be preaching out of the Word of God. Uh, and uh, uh, please continue to pray for this ministry and that we will continue to, to uh, work only from the Scriptures and define our truth by what God has revealed to us in Scriptures. Bow your head in prayer with me. Father, we uh, come to you in prayer. Father, thanking you for the blessing of your word. Father, we ask that our hearts be receptive to your word and your ways and your truth, Father. Help us to stay clear of the deceptions of this world. And Father, keep our minds and hearts on you. And Father, anyone out there who is not understanding of the gospel, that it is belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, Father, we pray that you would touch their heart and give them the faith needed, Father, for them to believe and to be saved. And Lord, we ask that you, we pray that you're coming soon and the rapture is soon, Father, and you'll take us from this evil, deceitful world. And we ask all these things, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.